good morning, everybody. I'm Klaus Leitenberger. I'm from Leitrim, as you can hear, obviously, with my accent. <laughs> and I, I do need a prop with me, just in case I, I get stuck. Um, my background has always been organic vegetable production. For the last 25 years, I've been running market gardens in, in England. I've been training, lecturing at UCC, and now I work as an organic trust inspector, so I see the whole range of farming, organic farming systems in Ireland. But um, I came to Ireland in 1999 as the head gardener at the organic center then, and I came across a book called The Lost Crops of the Incas, and it totally changed my life, because I thought I knew everything about growing vegetables and varieties and whatever, and then they had a list or a book with dozens of food crops that I've never heard of as a vegetable gardener. Can you imagine? And I thought if the potato can grow in Leitrim, coming from the high Andes mountains and grows at sea level in poor Dobby clay, there must be loads of other crops that have a potential. And they were, they were all listed. So for the next 20 years, I found loads of different crops. And I tried them to grow in Leitrim and in Cork and many other places really successfully. And some of them are adapted to very poor ground or marginal soils, which is suitable for the west of Ireland. Unfortunately, I had to focus on just two crops that I think have the highest potential for profitability and health benefits, and these are yakon and Jerusalem artichokes. That's the yakon here. I got 10 kilos per plant, by the way, from it, which would be 100 tons a hectare. Pretty good, isn't it, compared to others? But the Andes, the Incas had a massive diversity in tubers. Do you probably remember in the 1840s in Ireland, we had one vegetable, one variety, the lumper, and the disaster of it. The Incas had 10 different tubers, all in different plant families. From each of those, they had hundreds of varieties, and they all grew them together in fields. So food security was fantastic. They, they may have been poor, but they, there was never starvation in these countries. So food diversity, I think, is the absolute key for security. I, 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 while I will concentrate on the two profitable ones, I just want to give you a little flair of the, the, the crops that I studied. And one of them is maca. Has anybody heard of it? Hands up. Yeah, a few people. You find it in every single health food shop in Ireland. You find it in super value shops throughout in little powder form. And apparently it's the new superfood. I took a, it boosts the immune system, it strengthens you and keeps you healthy. I took a spoonful of it during my Nuffil travels for the 10 weeks I was on the road, traveling through all those different countries, and I never had a sniffle or a stomach ache. Apparently it's also the new Viagra, organically produced, so be, look out for it. And um, the other one is even, Unfortunately, we can't grow maca. I, I, grow, I grew maca, but it only stays very small, so buy it. But the other one is mashua, the tuberous nasturtium. It's very much like the garden nasturtium that we have, but the Incas, they bred it into a vegetable. You plant one of those tubers, and you get 30, 40 big tubers. They're a lovely one. They're the world's most beautiful vegetable, if you want to look at it afterwards. Now, th these have the opposite effect, apparently. That, so that's why I didn't use them. They <laughs> reduced libido, apparently, according to folklore. They were given to the warriors when they went to war, the Inca soldiers, so they could focus on the job rather than <laughs> other bits. For farmers, though, I read somewhere, it could be useful if you could get, if you feel, sorry, I'm sidetracking here. <laughs> she keeps an eye on the time. For farmers, it could be a useful crop to reduce libido in, in breeding anim or in animals, you know, use for, for weight gain. Anyway, the Chinese are importing it in large um, amounts as a prostrate cancer remedy. So it's, it's, it's an interesting one. Isn't it a gorgeous vegetable? Oka is another great tuberous, and that's an edible lupin from the Incas. Now, I continue. F uh, food diversity, I mentioned already, we are far too dependent on just a few numbers of food crops. Three crops supply the world's protein and, and calorie intake, which is crazy. And, and our grannies always say, don't put all your eggs into one basket because it can go wrong. In Ireland, we are still, I think, far too dependent on just a small number of farming enterprises, dairy, beef, sheep, farming, while we import one ton of food per person per year. So that just leaves so much potential for farmers in Ireland. And the uh, challenge is, we all know that um, consumer trends are changing. We, there's perceived or real allergies to dairy, to gluten, 
I don't know if they're real or a fad or a fashion, but the hell, whole health food industry is growing. Vegetarianism, vegan food is growing. Climate change, we, farmers have to adapt to changing weather conditions, climate patterns, but also farmers are blamed for carbon emissions. And, but see that as an opportunity. See that as make money out of health foods. You know, they're, they're highly profitable crops selling direct. Cash in on it a little bit. And for climate change, become climate farmers. Put carbon into the soil, make your soils fertile, and you, you're going to be the poster boys for the climate change movement. We have to act together in, in that field. I think that's very important. Um, so I really think we need a more resilient food system and diverse food system, not having being too one-sided and too dependent on so many imports of food while we have so much land, fertile land, to grow these crops. And I mentioned already the mashua that I have grows in the litrim daub so that there's plenty of crops that can be grown. There's no need for genetic manipulation of foods and trying to make the potato grow in salty areas or in different conditions. There are food plants around that can grow in all different types of soil. So finally I come to yakon and Jerusalem artichoke. These are the two crops that I think have really good potential in Ireland. Yakon is a a tall growing plant, soft downy leaves, very tropical looking, and the tubers are eaten raw as a, as a snack. That's a field in, in Kilkenny. Pat Fitzgerald from uh, Biotanics is growing one or two hectares of yakon, and what he wants to do is make it into a syrup for the food industry. He doesn't want to sell it as a crop, but as a syrup. Now, this syrup is ideal for diabetic people suffering from diabetics and for people suffering with chronic stomach problems. Because it, it's the fruit, the, the vegetable that contains more fructo-oligosaccharides, I practiced that many times before today, than any others. And it's, it bypasses the small intestine, goes into the large intestine, and activates all the goodies in your gut, which will, it, it will soon become the new stevia. A healthy sugar, imagine, we might lose weight from it, and it's excellent for us. So Coca-Cola or any other food processing companies might be fighting over it very soon. Is it a profitable crop? I went to um, a grower in Holland, De Vague, and they've grown yakon for years and years. And they get a yield of about 7 kilos a square meter, or 70 tons a hectare. I got more in Cork. I got about 100 tons a hectare. And he sells it at two euros a kilo. So that leaves him with a gross margin per hectare now of 120,000 euros. Any cereal farmers competing with that, I wonder? <laughs> the second one, Jerusalem artichoke. Don't mistake that with globe artichoke, the one you know, you, the thistle-like one. That's not it. It's that knobbly thing over there, the knobbly tubers. And it's very closely related to sunflower. So it grows really tall, two to three meters tall. I did, did a trial the last two years, growing 10 different varieties of Jerusalem artichoke, mainly to look for a smooth variety, because that's one of the drawbacks of it. There's lots of products. The Germans make schnapps out of it, German potsheen out of Jerusalem artichoke. You can get it into a powder for muesli or into a syrup. But why it's grown, or the highly beneficial thing, is the inulin content of it, which again is ideal. And look at the Germans. Like, that's getting it too far. An organic, vegetarian, dog food snack with Jerusalem artichokes. Now, I wouldn't go that far. It's the best prebiotic food of all. It contains inulin, and the inulin goes into your... Again, it, it bypasses your stomach, your, your in small intestine goes into the large intestine. So we don't get weight gain from it. But it's a prebiotic. It activates all the bifidobacteria in your stomach. So it's a really super crop. And you can feel it. Has anybody eaten it? You feel it after two hours. I offered to bring some along for your soup, but they thought it was too dangerous. <laughs> um, I wouldn't inflict you on it. So you can feel it rumbling and grumbling, and it has nasty side effects until the bacteria are built up in your system. And then you, you're immune to it. But you, you, at the beginning, you have to be careful when you eat it. Why I'm really interested in this crop is, and I, maybe that term exists, but it came to my mind, a climate crop. Jerusalem artichokes absorb more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere than a forest does. 
twice as much Russian scientists have found. So isn't that just a, a great um, thing? It can also be made into a paper pulp. The stalks are really woody at the end of the year. And uh, an ideal crop for soil reclamation, for cleaning up polluted areas, and also for absorbing air pollution planted around towns. Am I running out of time? No, no, Two no, minutes? No, yeah. Oh, brilliant. I'm good. Jerusalem, I saw that in Slane Castle. They have, 30 years ago, they planted wildlife corridors for pheasants, probably. 100 meter long strips, 20 meters wide of Jerusalem artichoke. They top them every year. The crop isn't harvested. That soil is full of carbon. That carbon was reabsorbed by that crop over years. I think it's, a, it's why not make that into a new glass measure rather than the wild bird cover alone, which often is, is a bit of a farce when I've inspected farmers. You know, the worst land, a little bit of barley and flax that doesn't germinate even. This one would grow. This one would take carbon out of the atmosphere. Why don't farmers get paid money to take carbon out for a crop in field corners? So conclusions. I think both of them have potential. Not massively yet, unfortunately, because nobody probably has heard of them yet. But yakon as a functional food will make it. Definitely. A syrup, a sweetener that is healthy for you will make it. Not, not really as a fresh vegetable. Or would you eat it? Probably would. Try it. But definitely to grow for processing. Jerusalem artichoke. In Germany, you find it in every supermarket now as the diabetes potato because it's a really good substitute for other crops if you suffer from diabetes. So I think that one, and along with its climate um, carbon absorption, will make a great crop. So recommendations. I, I think universities are a little bit stale nowadays. They get, I think they should branch out a little bit and do something more brave. And, and same with bought beer. I think they, they would have a great place to market those crops for more diversification on farms. It can only be helpful for farmers to have a separate enterprise in case something goes wrong with the milk prices. And I'm running out. No, thank no. you very much. I'd just also like to can thank finish, all this. Can I finish your recommendations? Sir? Okay. And Chagaskin Department really be brave, be bold, do something new, do something, you know, we can't just have all our eggs in the one basket and, and just keep going the one line and saying, diversify and, and make farming exciting and bring something new into it. And researching climate crops, I think, would be the key nowadays to find out how much carbon does a crop absorb from the atmosphere or produce and come to carbon neut neutral farms with the help of it. Thank you very much.